Hi, this is Farhad Safezi from the ELSA Institute in Zurich, Switzerland, and my talk will be about visual rehabilitation using crosslinking. These are my financial interests. Now, have a look at this 40-year-old patient. She is with me since a few years. She has stable keratoconus. And look at the procedure that I have performed in her before the procedure and four weeks later. And this is an amazing improvement of the keratoconus on the right and on the left eye. And we call this procedure PACE. Now you might say this is a, v, a really very nice result, but this is probably a result that was achieved with the Exheimer laser. Well, let me show you another example here before PACE and only seven days after PACE. And this is not an Exheimer laser. This is customized cross-linking. And the big difference to the laser is I have not removed a single micron of tissue. This is only cross-linking, no tissue removal. How did I do this? Well, I combined a number of sophisticated devices. The Schwind Amaris Exheimer laser. Our CI device imagines cross-linking technology that is under the Amaris laser and the epithelial maps from the MS-39 from CSO Italia. And these three devices, they work together flawlessly. And as you can see here, I can take the CI device technology from the classic laying position under the Amaris Exheimer laser. And if needed, I can use the same technology at the slit lamp to perform slit lamp cross-linking. Now let's go back to PACE. PACE stands for PTK Assisted Customized Epion Crosslinking. So let me walk you through how PACE works. The first generation of customized crosslinking was introduced eight years ago and it simply put more energy over the tip of the keratoconus and more energy means more crosslinking, more flattening. Now PACE gives an effect that is two to three times stronger than first generation customized crosslinking. PACE is second generation customized crosslinking. And what we do is the basis is our new Epion. We have developed an Epion crosslinking that is extremely powerful. It is just as strong biomechanically as the 10 minutes Epi of standard accelerated crosslinking. But we don't need gyontophoresis, we don't need oxygen. And what we perform in the first step is an epion, but over the tip of the keratoconus, over the Gaussian profile of the tip, not the axial, sagittal, tangential, over the Gaussian profile, we put a small zone where we remove the epithelium, epithelial map guided. As you can imagine, within this small zone, the epithelium is not the same thickness everywhere. It varies due to the keratoconus. So we need um, a PTK that has a specific offset from the center that is compensating for cyclo rotation and that creates a tiny opening, a window, an epi off window into the cornea based on epithelial maps. So we do not remove a single micrometer of stroma we stay only in the epithelium or in Bauman's membrane. So if I crosslink now in an epion manner, the entire cornea, the epion crosslinking is strong, but over the epi off area, the same uh, irradiation settings will give an even stronger result. That's the first gradient between the tip of the cone and the rest of the cornea. And the gradient means that the epi off area will have more effect, more flattening. Now there is a second gradient. When I saturate this cornea with riboflavin, the riboflavin penetrates the epithelium over the epion area really well, but it will penetrate even stronger over the epi off area. And then if you drop for 20 minutes, the riboflavin will go into the depth and to the sides. And as you can see here, this leads to a concentration gradient from the tip of the cone to the periphery. You have more riboflavin over the tip of the cone. More riboflavin means more cross-linking, means more flattening. And then in the very end, we treat selectively the area over the tip of the cone with 
even more fluent. That's the third gradient. And this is how it looks like in actual reality. Let me show you a short movie. You can see this is a pulsed, high fluence approach. And you can see that the small PTK zone over the tip of the cone gives us even more fluorescence. So this is one of the gradients that you can see here. Now again, it gives amazing results. Look at this case four weeks after PACE. And now something amazing is happening. If you look at the difference image, green means flattening, but there is not only flattening, there is also steepening on the other side, which is a coupling effect. If I press down here, the upper part goes up and this further regularizes the cornea and this is something an Exheimer laser never does. An Exheimer laser simply removes but it doesn't have a coupling effect. So we should not say this cornea flattened by 3.6 diopters, no. It regularized by 3.6 plus 2.0 by 5.6 diopters. Here's another example before pace and at six weeks after pace this patient with a small pupil gained four lines in um, spectacle corrected visual acuity and again here you can very nicely see the massive coupling effect of almost um, three diopters so in total a regularization of almost 10 diopters. The process seems to stop after roughly three months there is no big difference of between three and six months and then it is definitely stable here is a very nice example after 12 months. And again, this is not the Exheimer laser Athens protocol, Cretan protocol. We did not remove any tissue. And to show you this, look at the pachymetric map of this patient. It is virtually the same. No difference between pre-op and post-op in terms of corneal thickness. And because we used this very special approach, the demarcation line depth is also reflecting this. The demarcation lab, uh, line is at roughly 220 to 30 micron in the periphery, where we use our very solid epion, and it is much deeper over the tip of the cone, almost at the level of the endothelium. Now, one more time, when I'm asked why do we need another Exheimer laser protocol? We have Athens, we have Creighton, we have Sterix, we have Trek. These are different. These protocols that have been used for years, they combine Exheimer laser and cross-linking, but the effect comes from the Exheimer laser, tissue removal, and then because you remove tissue, you need to stabilize with cross-linking. PACE is the other way around. In PACE, we also use Exheimer laser and cross-linking, but the effect comes 100% from the cross-linking. The Exheimer laser is just a very precise tool to remove the epithelium over this small window. And we have the additional coupling effect that cannot be performed in an Exheimer laser. Something we were very curious about is how quickly do we see these changes after PACE. So what we did, we put patients in front of the MS-39 five minutes after PACE. And of course, there is a denuded area over the epithelium, which can falsify the measurements by two, three, even four diopters. But we wanted to understand the principle and we could not believe our eyes. Look at the topography five minutes after PACE. The keratoconus is completely gone. It's like a negative imprint with a massive coupling effect. Here we have five minutes after pace an effect of more than 20 diopters of regularization. So we push the cornea in very massively and then over the next three months it finds its final balance and its final position. So in conclusion, pace brings massive regularization it improves CDVA, we do not remove any tissue, and because we don't remove tissue, we can do a wavefront-guided PRK six to 12 months later, and even further regularize. And what is really beautiful too is, PACE can be used in progressive keratoconus, but also in stable keratoconus. So it opens up a new 
a new set of patients. 36 year old patient who tells you, my keratoconus has been stable for 10 years. I have been using contact lenses. I do not tolerate the contact lenses anymore. What are my options? Now, because we push the patients into massive flattening, we push them towards hypermetropia. So for now, we only choose patients who are myopic, minus two, minus three. So they go more towards zero. And because I cannot rule out that there is an ongoing, continuous further flattening, we, use patient, we only perform pace and patients with at least 52, three or four diopters of K-max. So they flatten over the tip of the cone by five or six diopters. And even if they continue to flatten two or three diopters more over the next years, they are still in a physiological range. We have currently treated 180 eyes, which is a one-year follow-up. And in late 2024, we will probably be able to publish our data. What we need here is the CI device, our penetration enhancers, the MS-39 and the Amaris. And uh, this has been a very nice uh, collaboration where we had a lot of exchange in terms of uh, approach with Francesco Versace from CSO Italia and our friend Charlie Awad from AUB Lebanon. Thank you very much for your attention.